Hi and welcome back to Lux Garage. I'm Jason and this is Lux Garage. Thanks for coming back to see me. A little different episode today. I did my first podcast about a month ago with the guys over at the Reseller Locker Room. That's Ben Rocky Top Picker, Alex the Beard King Picker, Shane Soda City Flips, and Chris Easy Pickens. They all got YouTube channels and they all buy, resell, trade around. I did a podcast with them. They had the subject of... Uh, collecting versus reselling and since i pretty much collect and i'm just starting to resell some of my collection they wanted to have me on it was my first podcast and i just wanted to share that with you but enjoy the podcast and check out those guys channel oh yeah now ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the resellers locker room podcast Episode 30, my name is Ben, the Rocky Top Picker. We got a full house in the locker room tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Up top, off the streets, making money off of shipping, selling hats with lice. We have Alex, the Beard King Picker. <laughs> Next up, we have the very animated Shane Soda City Flips in the house. And over past him, Chris, sweep your floor, you nasty bugger. Easy Pickens in the house with us. And our special guest, please welcome Jason Lux Garage, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome into the locker room, gentlemen. How are we doing? Good, man. Uh, What's up? Shane, are you good, bro? What was that? Ben said yeah. I was too still last time. Oh. <laughs> now you're just a, a wet noodle? Yeah. One of those wacky, <laughs> wacky flailing. Oh, the flailing wacky. Yeah, you know. there you go. You got to go like this, I think. Yeah. What's well, <laughs> it is good to have you back, Shane. We missed you last time, and uh, it wasn't the same, so we're glad you're back in with us. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, viewers of all ages, we have a special guest with us here in the locker room for this edition of the Reseller Locker Room Podcast. We have Jason from Lux Garage. He also is a YouTube creator. Welcome in, Jason. Why don't you uh, tell our viewing audience a little bit about yourself and your channel? All right. Of course, my, my channel's name's Lux Garage. It's uh, named that because I've got a 40 by 60 garage full of my collection. I've collected all my life. And I can't even get vehicles in there now, so I've decided to start letting a lot of it uh, go. It's very difficult to decide what to let go because I, I still buy and collect because I'm going to be a collector first. But I'm reselling a lot of that, trying to go through, decide what I want to keep, decide what I want to sell. And then the channel is just basically about me going through that. And I'm also going to shows and doing all kinds of other stuff because, you know, life going on so you want to enjoy it so that's what i do so i just videotaping everything i'm doing and then just trying to put a video out of it so there you go awesome that's how cool much, man cool how much do you want for that rat fink behind you uh it's not for sale i could have sold it quite a few times <laughs> <laughs> it's an actual right. official license if it was a uh, one of the knockoffs it probably would be pretty easy to get rid of but yeah well, Jason, anybody that watches your channel and the episodes and content you put out, anyone can figure out pretty quick that you're a big collector of a lot of things. Yes. And uh, that brings us to our topic of this episode, the difficulty of being a collector and a reseller. So, gentlemen, who wants to start us off talking about this hard subject? Well, I can start. Um, I've been a collector before I was a reseller. Honestly, if I was never a collector, I would never start reselling because that's how I got into reselling. I used to collect all the spawn figurines and it pretty much got out of hand and I started uh, selling them off years. I decided after I tattooed all the spawn onto my body, I could let some of the figurines go. So I still have, I think, about three listed, but I've sold a ton of them. And I, I still have my comics that I'm holding on to all the spawn comics. So um my problem is I like collecting a lot of things, so I'll get into something new, and now I'm buying every wrestling toy that I see. I want to buy a wrestling toy, so I think I, I got a handful of new wrestling toys here to the side of me that I that I bought, and not to resell, just for myself. So there's definitely been situations where I go out sourcing, 
and I'm supposed to be buying things to throw on eBay and I just buy it for my own collection. So definitely <laughs> does not help, but I, I think it's kind of cool being a, a collector and, and enjoying it. Now that I'm a little older, I can enjoy it for a little bit and then list it, you know, maybe hold on to it for a year and then share it to someone else and let them get some enjoyment out of it. So especially when it comes to like vintage toys, I feel like if I'm not saving them, I feel like I'm rescuing them, right? To pass on yeah. to another yep. collector once I'm done with it, you know? So, but there's definitely been a ton of, I've started getting into buying a lot of fantasy books now and that's taking away from my book business because <laughs> I know they're worth money. Welcome I, yeah. to the club, brother. Yeah, yeah, so that's my new addiction lately is buying some fantasy books I want to read. So, also, uh -oh. I know a guy who sells a lot of those. I heard he doesn't sell them anymore. No, I, heard he he, I heard he just lives on the legend that he used to sell <laughs> books on whatnot, but hasn't done it in quite a while. Uh, the, so. I, I have not had a book show in quite a while. Um, but since we're talking about it, I collect books and hats and it's very difficult for me to every time I go thrifting or yard selling or whatever, I'm always looking for books, uh, hats. I've, I've enjoyed wearing hats since I was a kid and I just, I like to find super cool ones and, you know, throw them on the shelf and display them. I have some at my office at my nine to five. Uh, I have some here in the eBay room. I have some in my bedroom. I have hats everywhere. So when I find cool ones that I know I should be selling, I have a very hard time doing it just because they look good in the collection. When it comes to books, I'm an avid reader. I read all the time and I'll buy tons and tons of books at a time and i want to sell most of what i buy but if i come across a cool uh stephen king especially he's my favorite author if i find a cool uh version of a book or a first edition that i don't already have i'm keeping it and there's no questions asked like that the, the thought to resell that book never crosses my mind because i know this is one i don't have and it's going to look good on the bookshelf next to yep. all the other cool ones I have. So, but that's me. Those are the only two things I collect, but they're both difficult to let go of when I see one that I really, really like. So cool. as a, as a true collector, when it comes to like toys and figurines, you have to buy three. So one to open one to display in the case and then another one just in case something happens <laughs> you, got the, you got the backup so three of them that's funny but you chris yeah oh, i collect a few different things um, i collect hot wheels i collect well i go through phases right i went through a phase years ago where i collected hot wheels man i needed to buy every hot wheel that i could find that i liked you know and then the next phase i was collecting model cars you know um like muscle cars uh, the plastic model kits collecting those stacking those yeah. up and then i was moving on to uh you know actual die cast like uh, 118 scale die cast muscle cars the highly detailed ones mm -hmm. um, the phase i'm in right now is lego star wars and i collect uh, many figures primarily and uh, some of the retired box sets so some of these mini figures are worth crazy money Yep. So I'll find them out in the wild picking and I just can't bring myself to sell them because they're so cool, man. So I got them all on display, you know, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's where I'm at right now. That's what I've been collecting lately. I've got a few thousand dollars worth of uh star Wars minifigure and it's, it's not that many. <laughs> Are we doing show and tell or what? It's like three. We'll, we'll get to show and tell. All right. But yeah, that's, that's what I've been dealing with. I, the other side of that is with pick i'll find stuff that i find it's cool i may not be collecting it but i'll find it something that's cool and i, I won't list it right away i'll like put it on display for a little while in my shop yeah. you know in my office yeah and then after a while I'll be, all right it's time to list it you know like some of these really sweet drag racing uh nostalgic drag racing die cast man yeah i just like having them on display because they're so detailed it's just it blows me away really oh so. i got a top of my shelf here is things that i bought to resell but i'm just kind of displaying them <laughs> Slowly getting listed. Well, let's, uh, let's, guys, let's hear from Jason. Let me tell you, 
How old are you, Jason? Well, I'm going to be 45 in September. All right. He is the collector kingpin. I'm telling you. I am telling you. I The stuff this guy's got. You need to go over and watch his channel over on YouTube, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Jason, let's talk about your aspects of a collector and a reseller. Uh, I collect Hot Wheels and signs primarily now. I used to hardcore collect um, records, but I listened to them also. So I didn't really think of it because collecting, I've collected them for probably 25 years. Uh, uh, skateboards, helmets. Um, I've collected just about anything I like. I see, I used, I buy it. I like the old toys I used to play with when I was a kid. And uh, like I said, if it's uh, something that I like, I buy it. It didn't really have to be a hot wheel or a sign it's just you see something you really just sparks an interest i just went and got it uh or i heard something about something that i wanted to see or somebody show me something cool and then i'll go hunt around and try to find one because i really like you know what it looked like or whatever but yeah. my collection's mostly hot wheels signs records i've got probably 200 hats but i've wore them all my life and i didn't really look at them as collecting them and then uh you know Basically, anything to do with UT is, is not really a collection, but I've had all my life. So, and that's pretty much what I collect and kind of do. Cool. Well, I'm a little different from you guys. You know, back in middle school, high school, I was avid into ball cards. You know, we had a couple of ball card shops here in town. I'd go there after school every day, spend a couple hours in there buying wax packs, opening those things up. Still have my entire card collection. Me too. Um, got some really older high dollar cards. One of the possessions that I do have that I know that I would never sell is an autographed Mickey Mantle baseball. And I, we went, me and my dad went to a sports card auction here locally to benefit the Boys and Girls Club. I'll never forget that day that he was starting to bid on that baseball. And there was a big, there was a, well, I don't think he practices here anymore, but he was a big doctor in town and my dad was bidding against him and my dad won the bid. And that was the most exciting time winning that mantle baseball. But, you know, I, I like die cast and hot wheels, but I got to, I differ from you guys really being a collector and reselling is not a problem for me. I guess I'm on that high of what can I make a buck on? So yeah, I see things all the time that, yeah, it'd be nice to put in my collection, but look what it's selling for. I mean, I, to me, I am I would rather make the money. And, you know, I'm working towards a goal of paying my mortgage off. So that probably makes a difference, too, on an individual basis. What are you trying to accomplish? So if it's worth any real value, I'm if I don't already own it and I find it out and I find it, I'm going to sell it. So... I've, I've, well, I'm not much of one to keep stuff. I think if, if I was a full-time reseller and didn't have a W-2 income, I probably yeah. would look at things a little different and it'd be a lot easier for me to let stuff go. I think that probably you're right, Shane, that probably makes a difference too. You That's know, when you're, doing this for, when you're doing it for a living, you kind of set the stuff aside and say, Hey, I can make money right now with this, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. That's true. I mean, you can always buy it later too. Once right. You, yeah. Get in the right. Once, you make, once you make your YouTube millions, right? Yeah. <laughs> you'll you'll just buy it from another reseller. You gotta pay, you gotta pay pay up for it this time, you know. Yeah. It's hard though when you find something that you are you like to collect and you find it at a yard sale for a dollar and you know it sells for more, but you want it, you know. It's so but, tough. Yeah. Like the wrestling toy, I got a Hulk Hogan NWO wrestler, right? It sells, I got it for a couple bucks cheaper than it is on eBay, but I'm a compulsive buyer. So I would never go on eBay and actually buy this wrestling toy. But since it was right in front of me, yeah, yeah. Then, I, then I buy it. You know what I mean? But I wouldn't take the time to go search it and, and buy it. So, I, well, that, that reminds me, Alex. I did go to a flea market. It was sometime last year and I, I found something I can't remember at the time, but I remember when I found it, I was like, oh, I've got to keep this. Yeah. Well, after I got home and I thought of putting it in the house, I felt guilty because I come in here and comped it out. And then I really felt guilty being, you don't need to keep this. Look what you can get for it. And then I ended up selling it. So but didn't you play with them first before you listed them? No, 
<laughs> don't, don't, don't torture myself. <laughs> it's hard you to know? train yourself to do anything different. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how you train yourself to do anything different. I mean, if you like it so much that it, you know, I don't know. I can't, I can't differentiate yet. Collector, if I said I want it, I'm going to keep it. That's just anybody that knew me up until a couple of years ago would have said that, that boy don't sell nothing. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, you got a 30 by 60 garage to stick it in. <laughs> well, not no more. It's full. So, <laughs> yeah. So we trying to get we we trying to get uh trying to get it up uh, moved around enough so I can start putting my air stream in there and start working on it. So oh nice. Before yeah. I went full time, I was one of those diecast guys that made my rounds. I went to Walmart at a specific time. I went yep. to dollar store, and I would come oh, out of there with just boatloads of cars. Dude, I've not done that, and I don't know how long now. Yeah, it's really not worth your time. I don't even know what I don't a hot wheel is. Your time there's anymore. There's a, a few newer hot wheels. There's a There were some Go money ahead. that just came out, though. I forget the model that came out. I know people are saying it was selling for like $65.85 on eBay. And it was it was in Walmart, so you could find them at Walmart. I don't remember. Well, the car. Yeah. What, everybody's looking, what everybody's looking for is the treasure hunts, right, Jason? I mean, that's. Yeah. You got these guys Super. that'll get up at five in the morning yeah. to hit Walmart before it opens so they could be the first ones to comb the pegs to pull the treasure hunts off. What is a treasure then, hunt? Can you explain that for me? Because I don't know anything about go for it, Jace. Hot, hot wheels. Uh you're what you're looking for is a super treasure hunt. The regular treasure hunt's pretty common now. You can pick them up yeah. any show for a couple bucks, three bucks. But the super is gonna have a Spectre Flame paint. And it's also going to have real rider tires. And if you'll flip it up on its side, it's going to have a little green symbol behind it with a little flame through a circle. That's the easiest way to tell the, you know, if you're looking at a Hot Wheel and it's like shining compared to the rest of them, flip it up on its side and look behind it, see if it's got that circle. Then you'll know you found one. Most of them, as soon as they come out, you know, they're $30, $40. And then some of them skyrocket $100, $150, $200. And they're right off the wow. peg at Walmart for $1.15 or $1.20 now. So. Wow, that's yeah, cool. They just produce those, Shane, in less numbers. The yeah. super treasures are in less number production. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't found a super treasure yet. I've, I found a couple of regular treasure hunts, but you know they're not really worth anything. The ones I found, anyway. Off the pegs is what I'm talking about. Peg hmm. popping. Unless it's a new casting that I collect. I only collect 89 and back now, but unless it's a new casting I collect, I'm selling it as soon as I get it or trading it because it's great trade stuff if you're into a collecting. I will oh, tell yeah. you this, we'll if, you, if, if you're a collector of Hot Wheels, any of y'all watching this, you, you know what I'm going to say is true. But if you're thinking about getting into the Hot Wheels collection area, if you are a completist, you can forget about it. I don't think there's any way possible that any one person can get every single car produced by Hot Wheels. The closest one that I know that might be there is Jason. <laughs> but it's impossible producing so many since the late sixties till now. If you're a completist collector, I don't think you could be done. Do you Jason? Um, no, because there is, if you're going to count prototypes, there's going to be things you'll never have. But as far as, Oh, if you want to talk about variations, I mean, you could get into those all day. I mean, yeah, but to, I mean, have, but to have every one plus the variations, right. I mean, completest. Even red lines, the first years they come out, they come out in eight to 12, even 20 colors on some of them. Yeah. So, and that's the very first year in 68. So, I mean, it's always been a, uh, we can produce this car different colors, people are going to buy it. So, gotcha. All right, Alex. Yes, what sir. What to now? What do you want to do? We want to show off. Let's have a show and tell real quick. Show and show tell. and tell. So this is an item. This is my whole childhood. Yes. Hey Alex, you got a, you got the spawn Hot Wheels. Uh, I do not have spawn Hot it's, Wheels. No. It's a, the comic book he was talking about is actually in the package, and then there's a Firebird funny car that come with it to spawn, oh, and they've really? got two variations of it. Plus they've got I think two different comic books in those. But it's oh, okay. actually a spawn comic book. I'm not for sure which series and which number. And it's got yeah. a matching car for the cover inside. It's a 
it's a firebird funny car and they have it with and without bats on the hood i'm just i didn't know if you had that or not because you said no you were a big yeah the only thing I have is the Spawn toys, all the comics. I don't have that one though. And then I have the Spawn record vinyl. It's a from the movie. It's a dual picture. I think it's picture disc. That's somewhere because I collect tons of vinyl too. So, all right. So this is my childhood. It'll never be listed because I've always been chasing after finding a good one. And mine's not incomplete, but it is the Castle Gray School. So I could get Snake Mountain too. But it is the one thing I'm still collecting is anything, anything He-Man, I'll still pay up money for it. I got this one for like 40 bucks, which they can sell for like, I think there was a price tag for like 100 on this one. I got it for 40. They usually go for like 65, 85 on eBay right now, depending how complete they are. If they have all the pieces inside, of it, they'll go for more than that. So that's never getting listed, though. Because, you know, I've always, since I, my mom, I guess, threw mine away, I had to buy a new one. Yeah. There's two <laughs> versions the, of that. Mm -hmm. that first yeah, the least. figures too, Alex? I have the Battle Cat somewhere, like the original one. And then I have, I'll show it in another episode, but I have He-Man and Skeletor Rock'em Sock'em, which is mm. a pretty rare item. I've never <clears> seen it before, so. That one's not getting listed either. It's actually the Rock and Sockham's in the middle of a uh, He Man style WWE ring. So it's pretty cool. It's all way up here. So sounds cool. Yep. So that's right. that's that's one item that I, I won't get rid of. And then we can let let you else share. And then I do yeah. have one item that I'm ready to list. Hey Alex, was that a first run? Uh I'm not sure on this one. Yeah, you can no. tell by the eyes being darker, and then there's a door shape. If you, the doors will come up and around and and square. It's, it's more so squared cool. at the corners, and in the light, the eyes are a little lighter. If you got one of those, those bring way up there. They're a lot more yeah. than a hundred dollars. Okay, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't think so. It's pretty dark, but I don't know if the if this is square the door. Yeah, see the the door. You you that looks like it could be. The door is more squared here instead of being around in the corner. So it could be. It just depends on how light those dark, those eyes are. You might want to look into it. if you. I know you're not going to sell it, but if you decided to. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good to know. That, yeah, that's cool. Hopefully I, it's worth more. Realize. I'm going to go look at mine now. There was variations. Yeah, yeah, there's there's a lot of variations on all that stuff. See, if well, they had the well, other Chris, one, the Snake Mountain, then I would probably buy that one too if I could find an original of that. So <laughs> to add it to my collection. Remember using the microphone on that thing. Whenever oh, I had yeah. you have yeah. one of those <laughs> as well, Chris. Yeah, Chris, I have a Castle Gray School. It's not in as good a condition as Alex's, but uh, I picked it up in a garage shop like three bucks or something. Oh, nice. And the plastic cool. is super brittle, but it'd be pretty cool to put on display. You know. I mean, like, yeah, something for your childhood that you find for three dollars. It's hard to sell it. Like, I don't know. Yep. I found a bunch of figures at the at my thrift store. What about six months ago, man? I was like three bags full. I mean, stuffed full. I had the battle cat. I had, had almost all the all the uh, enemies, mm -hmm. and then like a couple different of the the good guys. I don't remember all the names, but it was like five bucks a bag, dude. It was like one of those dream situations. Like, oh my god! And then it, it all sold for you know one hundred fifty dollars or something crazy. But wow, it was sweet. All right, who's next? Uh, I guess I'll go. Okay. So I mentioned earlier I collect books and hats, and I thought I'd go Stephen King theme here. So uh, just to show a couple of my first edition, uh, Stephen King Pet Cemetery. Nice. Christine. That one's in amazing condition. Okay, and then see. one of my favorite books whoops fire starter huh. i i love this cover the white cover let me Super let me cool. ask a nerdy book question when you read them do you take the book dust covers off i don't read hardback i read paperback oh you buy the paperback to read then right yep so all okay. the all the books yep. i read are i have read they're just uh, hard the they're hard, hard cop covers yeah. but but yeah i would take the dust jacket off because i wouldn't want to you know damage it crease it or anything silly yeah that's what i'm doing right now i'm reading a hardback but i'm taking off the cover because it's hard and hard to hold <clears throat> but i've been buying yeah. stephen king but i'm buying the paperback if i really like the series then i'll probably buy <laughs> the complete series as trophies after finishing the book of the hard the hardback edition there you go 
my, my wife's calling me a book snob now because I'm buying all the limited edition runs of books and stuff with the well, straight that's what edge I, and everything. I thought about I thought about bringing I got this super dope version of Stephen King's um <coughs> oh crap what book is it Night Shift it's mm -hmm. like this variation cover super cool cover um but I have the I should have that's what I should have done I should have brought one of each I have the first edition and then I have this super cool like rare copy of it um but that's the kind of stuff i look for if i'm if it's the first edition and it's nicer than the copy i have at home i pick it up for me and then yeah. i'll resell my other version but if yep. not i pick them up anyways because the first editions are always going to be a little you know better money but i also look for those um cover variations and things like that you know special editions like this stand came out with this S Stephen King decided to re-release it unedited. So there's like another 700 freaking pages <laughs> um, that didn't make the original <laughs> cut. So yeah. the books, it, you know, it's a <clears throat> big thick book now, but I'm actually currently reading that version in paperback that my uh, stepdaughter bought me for Christmas. So okay. um, I'm reading the unedited version of that book now, but uh, to stick with the Stephen King and hats, a lot of you guys have seen the video I posted, but I recently received this hat. This is it from uh, Amy, Amy at yeah. Beach by Repeat. I was watching cool. one of her live videos. Uh, it is on a it tag as well. That's cool. But I was watching one of her live videos uh, where she was digging through some Gaylords um, that she had bought from Goodwill, her Goodwill like late at night they auction off gaylords full of just random stuff that i guess didn't sell um they auction it off and she she wins these things for like five bucks she she made three bucks you know just on this hat she tried to give it to me for free and just asked me to pay shipping but i was like no we're here to make money let me at least give you a few bucks for bucks for it so yeah so i sent her eight dollars to cover shipping and all but um yeah, so like that hat, it's cool to me for you know a couple different reasons. Yeah. One, it's Stephen King related, but it's just a cool looking hat too. It is cool. Right? So that one is going to be hard to let go of because I've never seen one before. Mm -hmm. But well, I guess we can come back to that later, Alex. You're <laughs> next on, on the cliffhanger, but the yeah the the next part of this episode that you want to discuss the the right. challenge. Okay. Yeah. All right, so. Chris. All right. <clears throat> all right, I got some Lego minifigures here, and uh, so these are all from the Clone Wars and the Clone Wars sets. Let's see if I can figure this out here. Look at that okay. fancy display case. Yeah, that's cool, man. Keeps the dust off them and everything. All right, so. These are exactly. mainly from Clone Wars. I'm trying to keep the glare off. I can't even see That's, hardly. Ladies and gentlemen, that is 20 grand worth of plastic right there. That's right. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Dang, I'm, I'm backwards. All right. So these two right here clipping this are Captain Rex. And those are the most, ex well, those are two of the most expensive in the case. Um, these two up here, uh, Boba Fett and Jango Fett. Is, let's see, Boba Fett is a kid and Jango Fett is dad. That set right there is like five hundred bucks. Well, Holy between four and five hundred. But uh, but yeah, all these are from Clone Wars. So we got uh, Shock T, Captain Rex, General Grievous, Jango Fett, Boba Fett, and then Ezra Briggs, and then that's Jango and Boba's his kids or you know father son. But these aren't for sale. Um, I found I only bought one of these like. On eBay, I, I sent somebody a lowball offer for Captain Rex Phase One, and they accepted like for half price. But all the rest have been thrifted for pennies. Dude, I'd sell them so fast it'd make your head spin. And the, and they do sell fast too. Like like if I if I if I put them up for sale, they, they would sell. I'm serious. What do you think that whole that whole box would go for to, in in total? Uh, between between eight hundred and a thousand. Sold. Get out of here. <laughs> well, I got I got. Three more of those cases that are maybe maybe not quite as much as that, but comparable. Probably like a three thousand dollar collection or something. Something silly, man. And I only bought one of them, <laughs> like legit, you know. That's, That's cool, man. That's so. good finds there. Yeah, buddy. 
All right, Jason, you're up, buddy. Uh, I'll show a couple things. I just got this. I thought it was really cool. This is a brand new, this Hot Wheel hadn't come out. Well, it's about to be out in the next month or so. It's oh, an unspun yeah. of the uh, Here Hot Merc that Brendan just got finished with. And, uh, well, he's a designer for Hot Wheels. Anyway, um, he just finished that. I picked that up at the show. Uh, like I said, it's not come out. Uh, it'll be out in the next couple of weeks to a month. But uh, cool. and then I picked up, well, I picked this up years ago. This is something kind of cool. If, if you like uh, old drag racing stuff, this is a snake. But this is a prototype package. You can see right here. Let's turn it this way. This has oh, got yeah. toasters and some other craziness. What they did was they'd stamp it out. Mattel would stamp whatever they had out, and then they would check, test fit the packaging. So there's only one of these known in the world. Uh, I know who's got the, the uh, pair to it because he's wanting the other one. I mean, he's wanting this one to go with his mongoose. And then one other, uh, well, I got a couple other things, but I'm going to show this one. This will be on the new video. This is an original case from 1970 of Red Lines. Of course, wow. it's empty, but to find an original case from 1970, I've got some plans for this. And uh, wow. that's just, that's just some stuff I've picked up in the last little bit. <laughs> Holy crap. Told you, man. He's got the stuff. Dude. So what is that? What is that valued at? What's that? What is it valued at? If you could put a value Which on one? it. All, Which one? Just all of them combined, well, maybe. This is this one's just an unspun, so it's probably you know 25 30 bucks after you know it starts coming out. Uh, this one, yeah, that's cool. I'm gonna say 25 to 3,000. Um, and I'm gonna say maybe the box, it's in rough shape, it's all relative on the box, but I'd say at least three to four hundred dollars, maybe for the empty box. Oh, yeah. But uh, you know, just, there's just not a Sell lot that's around there, so but my hey, plans, on the, yeah, uh, my plans car, the unbelievable. Box, there's listed on the cars that come in this box, so I'm gonna try to get them all and display them coming out of the box. Well, why don't so. you just in your shop open up a Hot Wheels museum and you could charge people to <laughs> walk through it? Well, I think Ben's the only one that's actually seen some of my Hot Wheels side of my sh shop, and it's basically is a museum. Right yeah, now, it already, it he's already I've there. Got, I've got every car. Uh, every car is on display from 1968 to 1989, right now. Okay. Oh, and then I'm, and I'm slowly starting getting all the packages of the original red line packages and the black wall stuff in the pack. That's the track sets. I'm slowly trying to get room to put all that out. So, all right. I'm not. I'm, I'm not Where? even a collector. Where are you located? Listening at? to this, I don't have a Stephen are, King. Are you in? Are you in Tennessee? I, yeah, I'm in Tennessee. So can me and Ben go on a field trip and go <laughs> look at your thing? I was, I was gonna say, how far are you from the 127th? Dude, you know, that's that's scary. That's I, like, I have Hot Wheels, but I don't have that that cool type of thing. I already told Jason, dude, I, I'd have to bring ten or twenty grand with me to go shop at his house. There's no way I'd get out of for sale. There's, there's quite a few stuff that I'd sell, but if it's on the wall, it's probably not going to be for sale. Yeah. Yeah. So, hey, for sale of the week. Who? For sale of the week? Yo, yes. go. For this show, yeah, I just got a sale. It wasn't a great one, but a sale nonetheless. Yep. First show sale. I forgot we were recording tonight, so I already accepted all my offers. So I can't sell anything on this show. You forgot we were recording. All right. I I accepted an offer earlier and I was like, ah, should have waited. Should have waited. <laughs> just just accept them as soon as they come in. All right. I got a, I got a five dollar offer on a thirty dollar item. That's great. Yeah, that's but up par with everybody else right now, I think. Man. So I I have a die cast room and I, I've got a lot of my collection hanging on the wall and I pluck this off the wall. I like one-off stuff, and it's the only way usually you can get that is through pro prototypes and Hot Wheels, or if you get into the custom community where people start customizing these cars. This is a Freddy Krueger. Oh, that's dope. I have some. See him on the hood? Yeah. yeah. A little gasser, and it's Nightmare on Elm Street. That's cool, man. And it's signed by the customizer oh, that cool. done it. Um, would I sell it? You daggone right. If the price is right, I'd sell it. 
<laughs> well, I don't know like what it is, guys. Roughly. I can identify with every one of you about how you can become attached to something. I mean, I've got things that I'm attached to, but being in reselling and finding stuff cheap and making some killer profit on it, I'll just let anything go if the price is right, except mm. that man on baseball. I won't do that. But everything else, if I, it, you know, money's good, I'll let it go. Yeah. So what do you think that Freddy Krueger custom is worth? I don't know. Jace, you ever seen anything like that? Yeah, there's a there's a lot of guys. Not this exact one. You know, they go to the shows. There's this, the customizing stuff's become huge yeah. in the last 10 to 12 years, really. I mean, I used it's to do a lot of it back in the day, and then I, whenever you become a get into custom contest, if you win one in amateur, then you got to go up to pro. So my whole goal was just to win one in amateur. I won one, and then I quit. So <laughs> yeah. I used to well, do them, and now no, I just do them for. I give them. I do them to give away now for ropes at the shows. I'll I'll make a custom run of fifteen or twenty, and then I'll give them to my close friends to you know commemorate the show that you only see once a year. That's cool. I just found something I need to add to my collection, and I'm going to share my screen. Are you, are you, are you shopping you're... during the show? What are you, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, I was just <laughs> cur curiosity. He's not even part of the show. He's just shopping. Curiosity got the best of me. I'm going to buy some of that. Researching things. <laughs> I've got that. Okay. You've got that? Yep. Hundred dollars, well, Jason. How many do you have? I need one. I couldn't tell you if I've even still got that or not because it's if it's after eighty nine, I'm I'm basically let it go. So I mean, I'm not saying I don't have it. I just have to look. Well, if well, you do, there's four available. Yeah, oh. this douchebag's yeah. got four of them. I just want one. She that's an Eleanor. Golden well, sixty sweet. seconds. That's cool. Yeah, that's a that was a cool movie, movie man. Yeah, I'm really getting my movie. car striped just like this. But you only you only drive under the speed limit in the fast lane, Ben. Yeah. Little <laughs> do you know I got a speeding ticket over the weekend, but oh did yeah. you? <laughs> Let's talk about that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> How fast? <laughs> You're not like one of those guys that owns a Corvette but goes super slow. I don't know what's up with Corvette drivers, but it always seems to be the Corvette that's going super slow. Probably old. Older. Yeah, older. Or they already had a bunch of tickets. How come our squares got a lot smaller? It it got it flipped around. Know, um, my square was, was the same size it was before, but all your guys' squares shrink. There you go. There we go. We're so back. Got a small square. Probably because I shared my screen, and then whenever I stopped it, probably just adjusted. All right. I think we're back to it now. All right. Is it back to my turn here? Yep. I don't know. So I'm throwing out a challenge to any collectors slash resellers to list one item a week of their collection. We did, Hey, we didn't discuss a week. We discussed. I'm just throwing this challenge out because I need to downsize. <laughs> we discussed themselves. one <laughs> item. <laughs> All right. Well, I have built up a pretty decent size Hulk collection. So I'm going to start letting go of my, my Hulk Marvel Hulk collection. This is brand new in the box. I've had it for over, I don't even know how many years when this came out. The Hulk model. That's cool. So let's, what did I pay? I paid, I paid smash. $64 for this. I don't think this one actually went up in price. So I probably, maybe it's like 85. I'll look it up, but I'm going to list this. It's never been open. It would be cooler if it was open, but I was one of those weird collectors that didn't open anything. So yeah, I, if I, if I could have afforded two of them, I would have bought another one to open. But so I'm going to list that. <clears throat> and then I, I have more Hulk behind me that I'm going to start listing. Just not really to get rid of the collection, just so I could add my new wrestling collection up here. That's, <laughs> that's my new obsession with wrestling like figurines. Yeah, I got to make some room <laughs> for cool. some new stuff. And I and I slowly gave up on Marvel. So, well, All right. I'll list this. All right, what's yep. it go for? Yeah, what does it go for? I'm I curious. I'm gonna I'm gonna scan this right now and see what. Probably gonna be well, it's autograph. It's autograph too. So that's gonna. How, that's how gonna do you be... price a one-off custom? Who who done it? That's the thing. 
I don't know. I can't read it right. Two of mine listed at 130 right now. Not, oh, there sold you go. At that, not sold at that price, but I'll undercut them probably. Most of the time, customs 40, 50 bucks, 60 bucks. Just depends on the subject and what it is. Um, being that it's a 55 gasser, I actually physically collect that casting that Mattel. Well, good. Puts I'll out. sell it to you. Now that Mattel puts out, I don't do code three cars in collection. And only my, you know, if I got real good friends that we trade ropes around and I keep those, but as far as customs go, I, I really can't get into them because you start getting that in your collection. People start seeing that and they'll be like, Oh, well maybe his collection ain't the real deal. I have I'm no sorry. idea what the hell you guys are talking about. <laughs> Just <laughs> like me, you all talk about books. Yeah, let's talk about the books. Right. Expensive gonna, cars. I'm just going to pick up my book I'm reading right now and finish it. <laughs> People fake cars just like they fake everything uh, for years. And you're, you know, you'll have a $600 car, but then, you know, is it a real one? Is it faked? Was it faked in the 80s? So it looks like it's old today. There's a, you know, that's just what it is. It's, hey, man, we're all a bunch of fakers. This podcast is fake. We do it all, all right. the time, don't we, fellas? Mm hmm. <laughs> oh, oh. Everything's old saying, fake it till you Alex make it. is really not bald. He has a bald cap he puts on before we go record. I just wanted to be cool like Shane. <laughs> yeah, but he, I am pretty Shane cool. really has hair too. All right, Alex, what is you wanted to go through and then we'll move through some other segments. All right. Well, is we anyone else a, willing to let yeah. anything go? Yep. So, so All right, uh, wait, are you listing books? I'm going to bid right now, Shane. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to do Two different whatnot shows. Okay. One's all hats, and um, one is my entire Stephen King book collection. Holy crap! Why? Why? All of it? I've yep, I've read them all. How I much? honestly don't need them. Like they're just taking up space. Don't get me wrong, I love them, but I don't need them. They're just taking up space and. I was thinking about your challenge and I was like, you know what? That would be a good thing to step up to this challenge with because they just sit there and like look cool. That's it. And I have no sentimental value to any of them. But then the hat show, you guys know I love to buy hats. I'll get more hey, hats. For Shane, sure. let's cancel your whatnot show right now. Let's do a bulk buy. We'll talk after the show. <laughs> No, he's serious. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. <laughs> all right, you, cool. you're, you're gonna get you're gonna get dollars. So Ben Chris. Ben's gonna spend all his money at Jason's show buying Hot Wheels. <laughs> I'm gonna spend all my money buying all the books. <laughs> but I'm all gonna right. buy the resale, dude. Like I'm gonna make that money, you know. Well, cool. Diecast is big on whatnot, dude. I mean, I go into yeah. a lot of those shows, man. They get they draw numbers. Yeah. Yeah, and and you're cool. kind of known in the diecast community, Jason, right? Yeah. Uh, a little bit. <laughs> All right, Chris. That was an understatement. Uh, okay, so I got, what, 24 or 32 of these minifigures that I collect. It's uh, four You're going to sell those in that box. Eight. Well, I'm going to pick four out of my collection to sell, okay? I haven't quite decided which ones to sell. I know which ones I'm not selling. <laughs> That's important. You got that figured out. But yeah, I'm that's the important part. But uh, but I'll I will I'll pick four out. I'll get them listed by next show, and I'll share like what's sold or what's listed or both or you know however it rolls. So nice. mark me down as four items. I'm gonna sell. Cool. Let's see, I'll I'll mix it up. I'll, I'll put some good ones in there. All it's right. tough though, man. Those things are hard to come by. Fellas, you might be ready for this one. I don't know, but I figured we'd just go ahead and do some of the general segments that we always do. Let's talk about this find of the week, guys. What did we get? What did we get? I'm starting, hmm. Alex. I got this Team Sleep vinyl. So Team Sleep is uh, like a side project of Deftones. This was a record store day release, so it only limited edition. You could only get it during record store day. I pay $39.95 for this. It's selling for around $85.90 on eBay right now. Nice. So I got this at McKay's by trading in dud books to try to get money for this. So when was them? when was that released? I remember uh, Saturday. I love Death. So oh nice. I Death love Deftones Death and I remember yeah. Team Sleep, but I didn't know they were still doing stuff. 
Yeah, this just came out. So Record Store Day was Saturday, so they only do limited edition runs on Record Store yep. Day. And this was, I didn't even show up to Record Store Day. I came the day on Monday, and McKay's had one left of this, and I just picked it up, scanned it, and saw that it was selling. There's 58 listed right now, and 150 have sold already for 95 to 85 bucks. Good sell nice. through, right? So I've seen it. And if it never sold, Deftones is one of my all-time favorite bands ever. So, you know. If it never saw right, well, it, will be. Answer yeah. this adrenaline or around the fur? Mm. It's a tough question. Yeah, I don't know. They're the <laughs> Pink close. Floyd of Metal, in my opinion. That's what I call them Pink Floyd of Metal. Um, <laughs> around the fur? I don't know. Back to school. There's so many good albums. Every album's I great. I, th- I, I think I pick around the fur personally, but yeah, they're both great. Yep. Um, guys, I really didn't do any kind of sourcing this week. Um, Your van. <laughs> I, yeah, I did. That's, I did Finally. buy a van. You need the to get a picture was, of that and share it. It's amazing. Shane. Get a picture of the got, van. I already got stickers ordered, bro. There you go. You got a picture you can share of that van? We'll put it up. Yeah, let me uh, let me go to my Facebook really quick. Here, I'll, I'll share my find real quick. All right. Yeah, go for it. <clears throat> All right, so this was hanging on the wall of a of a sale that I went to. Oh, that's cool. Oh wow, boy, that's going to uh, be fun to ship. It's wow. I'm going to keep it actually. <laughs> I think it's a uh, five foot by three foot. See how big the sucker is. That's well, cool. How it, it's, how it's picture. magnified. That's really cool. I don't Go ahead and roll. I'll tell you what it is. It's a picture of Chicago's first 500 mile international auto derby, Speedway Park, Chicago. June 26, 1915. And it shows them like all on the starting line right there. Yeah, that's and cool. the track is like one of the board tracks. But if you look at that, yeah. just the mere size of this freaking track, dude. Just yeah. Craziness. Anyway, I got that for that's... five bucks, man. Wow. That's cool. I was at a I was at a sale where there was a a son and daughter cleaning out their parents' garage, and uh that was on the wall. Well, the sister or the daughter know, was man. out there when I when I showed up. And I was like, oh, how much for this? She's like, oh, that's not for sale. I was like, oh, man. So then the, the son came out, and she said, he wants to buy that. We're not selling that, are we? He said, yeah, five bucks. You want it? I'm like, yes, please. <laughs> Did you comp it out by chance? I didn't know. I haven't I haven't even researched it. It hasn't even crossed my mind to sell it yet. because I What if that thing cool. comp solds at $1,000? Would you it'd, sell it? It'll be out. I would sell it for 1000 <laughs> Let me know before you yeah. sell it. Okay. That's we'll just keep each other. Trying to find a place on the we're, wall we're, just gonna, we're just gonna buy each other stuff tonight. Yeah. That's what's happening. That, this is how we're gonna make it on eBay, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. We're all just gonna buy from one another. No the returns. Locker, locker room marketplace. Shane, do you like the Hulk? <laughs> That's a do good you, idea. Do you like the Hulk, Shane? Wait, I'll trade you for some books. <laughs> locker room marketplace. That's that's killer. Did you find uh, a right. picture of the van? Yeah, yeah here down it is. there waiting yeah, yeah. on you. There, there you go. Look there. at that. That's the Soda City snagging wagon, go. y'all. Snagging yeah. wagon. Yep. Are you gonna drive that to 127? I'm hoping to. It's it's yeah. gonna depend. There's it's got some some issues I'm working on. Uh like the distributor cap, rotor button, some news plugs and wires. It's got a few things that I wanna make sure everything's up to par before it, you know, takes a road trip like that. That's was, a that, was it was it a church van or uh, individual or what? Uh, it was, I bought it from an individual. Um, I think it may have used to have been a church van. Right. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Uh, I'm the third owner of the van, and the guy who I bought it from was using it as a mobile detail van. Got That's it. what he does for a living. And this was he bought this as a second vehicle in his little fleet. Now, is that why the back whatever. seats? Do you have the back seats, or they were just completely gone? They're no, gone. they're completely gone. And okay. uh, I know you said you were watching my new video. I just posted a video about this van. Yeah. Um, but I I mentioned in the video that when I bought it, the seats were already gone, mm-hmm. which is exactly how I wanted it, anyways. Had I found one with all four rows of seats, three of them were coming out. Yeah, because I wanted. I wanted the driver's seat, passenger seat, and the one row 
for anybody else who may be riding and the back is just for sourcing and whatever so yeah, this yeah is... it was, i found it exactly how i would have done it anyways yeah that that van is this first van that i toured in so we had just the one bench seat and the rest was all equipment and then yeah. we, slept, we slept on top of our equipment if we couldn't get a place to stay it's <laughs> cool right yeah, but fifteen hundred bucks cash, love it, absolutely love it. And when you tint those windows, two thousand or something. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta tint the windows for sure. What's that, Chris? What, what year is it? Like a two thousand or something, or what? It's a ninety-two, bro. Oh dang. Yep. It was way off. When you tint them, put somebody's, put the people's faces look like they're riding in the back. Yeah, <laughs> on the, the windows. <laughs> of all the other pickers. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's behind. It's good side. They're behind. Behind. side view. We can all, all the YouTube personalities faces on there. Side shots. <laughs> so I was I was on my uh I was on my live last night, and I was saying, "Have you guys seen my van? Have you seen my van yet?" You know, I'm just excited about it. And Corey's in there, uh, Grams and Pops Vintage, and he's like, "You're gonna have to get a sticker made that says, have you seen my van?'" Yeah. So now I'm gonna show you guys show you guys my sticker I designed. Today. You you ran with it, huh? <laughs> That's all he yep. did in his life. Have you seen my van? But it's really have creepy. You have you he'd be still? Have you seen my van? Have you seen my oh, van? Yeah, ladies. No, Let me you want, you want some candy. I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to get this sticker to pull up. This thing's dope, y'all. All right, hold on. I got it pulled up. Let me just get back. You just got to put a sticker on. of your van on your van. Oh, well, that'd be a great, great idea. <laughs> just wrap right. it. Let's see. With the sticker. Come on. Um, All right. Good job there. Looks great. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh, yeah, dude. That's killer. <laughs> Why didn't you just paint it like that? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone will see your van. That's that's funny. That's funny. Yeah, it so looks, it looks good with the the blacked out windows like that. I yeah, that's what I, I plan on doing. Is is this a Chevy though? That's, that's not a Ford, is it? That's that's a Chevy. No, that's that's it's not the, that's not the yeah. exact same van. That's yeah. AI generated. You, you get the idea. Though. Yeah, I get, I created that with AI. So that's cool. All right, Jace, you got a find of the week? Well, um, well, besides the box, uh, probably this is probably my favorite thing that I got. Uh, looks like an empty case, but this is the actual car that come out of this case. This is a Mexico Armand exclusive from 1983. Very rare to find one on the card. I, I collect loose. It was already uh, yellowed and busted, so I went ahead and loosened it. But that's probably one of my favorite things that I found while I was gone this last couple week or so. And then of course the red line box is just killer. Cool. So. All right. So sweet. I went yard selling on Saturday and it weather was terrible. Pouring rain when I got up and then when it wasn't raining, it was misting. But a lot of times when the weather's bad and there's still sales, there's less people out. Mm -hmm. I ran into a ton of stuff. I ended up spending $73 on Saturday when it brought it all back, got it all drafted, comped out, spent $73 with $829.59 in resale value. This is just one of the little things. A vintage waffle maker. Vintage kitchen appliances, man. If they still work, yes, bring sir. some money. Yeah, this yeah. Have to, he brings that to the house so yeah. we can have some waffles in the morning. Well, you know what? By the way, that reminds me, Alex. Thank you. Josh, Bama J Bird Resale. Since you like showing off all the food you make every day, you, my friend, is coming to the 127 House of the Reseller Locker Room to fix us breakfast every morning while we're in town. All right. Then found Whoa. this, this bronze eagle. This was at a church rummage sale, two bucks. Comps cool. on it between 60 and 80 bucks. Heck yeah. Isn't that Sweet. cool? That's yeah. very cool. That's so cool. I'd keep it. Yeah, I, am. <laughs> I got a giant eagle like that too, somewhere. somewhere yeah, but do you got one? Of, do you got one of these? I don't, because uh, send me some stickers. Let's trade. What the heck? I ain't getting no I stickers. I don't even have any of those. 
check, Hello, I, check, I, check your PO boxes because yeah, it was in my PO box. I talked to Jack. I like, oh, that a long time ago. I was like, oh, I haven't checked in about a week or two. But okay, well, I don't have a PO box. I, I got a PO box one. either. I went. I just, well, see, maybe that's the thing because my PO box is listed at <laughs> listed at the bottom of all my uh, video descriptions. That's how um, you keep getting gifts. Yeah, I got it in my yeah, bio People too. send me stuff, man, and it's super cool. You guys saw my video where uh, Chad sent me some cool hats and stuff. Um, man, just my viewers are absolutely uh, uh, amazing. Yeah, Wolfman sent me something, too. I uh, I just featured on a video that I'm publishing tomorrow. I did get nice. sent a, th a Thundercat, so one time. That's cool. Yeah, so I just happened to go to my P.O. box because that's where all my eBay orders uh returns things like that and all my whatnot orders go to well i had to, i had ordered some golf shirts off of whatnot um and i got a notification that they were delivered so i went to pick them up and i had that package from from josh in there i was like man that was super cool i had no idea he sent them yeah, that was a nice surprise for me too all now, right now i'm gonna send him some stickers i got his address now yeah his p.o box address <laughs> Sale of the week. Sale of the week. I'll go first. Start. I'll go first. Picked up a Mezco Living mm. Dead doll, a Nightmare on Elm Street Freddy Krueger with sound effects. Got that for 15 bucks. It sold for $52.72 plus shipping. Buyers all in at $72.77. That's cool, man. My my ex-wife used to collect living dead dolls, and I wish mm -hmm. I had her collection now. Those things sell pretty decent. Yeah, this was still in the box. I mean, yeah. Got it at a thrift store, I believe it or not. Hmm. All right. I, all right I, who's got, next? I got one. It's not the highest price, but the story behind this item. It's I'm going to butcher the name. Apokamia. I'm not sure. Revised version. It's a book from Greek to Latin. It's from 1894. So I found this book at the Goodwill bins for like a dollar. I sold it for $65. And this was probably a year, maybe almost a year ago. I'm not sure where I got it, actually. Um, and then after I sold it, I found a copy on eBay. And the person that had the book didn't know what they had. So I bought it from eBay for $11. And I just sold it, the same book, again, from an eBay to eBay flip for $67.41. So this vintage book so definitely nice. look back through your solds guys and see if you can find the same item because sometimes people don't realize what they have you know you can flip things from ebay to ebay yep, yep. yep. chris you sent me pretty. you sent me this chris yeah that's uh so i sell the week so it's a pair of uh shoes that i found at the thrift store well the thing about this is they're jordans and they already had an ebay authentication tag on them yeah so I scanned oh, them and made sure it was all legit before I bought them. I bought them for 12 bucks. Let's see. It says I listed them in March. So they haven't been around that long for shoes anyway. But anyway, they so I took an offer for $75. Uh, long story short, what? I made uh, 48 bucks on that sale. But that, that was my top sale since the last time we talked. You reckon that that will still be sent to authentic? Yes. I can't even forget. It is, it is getting sent to authentication. Twice it's, it's, it's going it's, now. Twice. Well, the first time wasn't for me. I got to so sell. I told them so. eBay's like, yep, they got to be authenticated. Right. So a pathetic sell, but it's a sell. You know what? You know what they're going to start doing? I guarantee this will happen. At some point, eBay will start charging us for that authentication service, and they'll take mm -hmm. it out of our money. I don't know. Right now, it's I, I don't mind when it's authenticated um, or when it has to go to authenticator because it's free shipping. So I'm just saying that's right. that's money grab. They'll start charging for that. Yeah, I hope not, but you know, we'll see. I use uh ever since I got popped for those um those fake ones, I use check check on anything that doesn't yeah. have an authentication tag on it like that. <laughs> so I use check check. A, a pair of shoes on check check for like three dollars, two or three dollars. You have to wait like uh I think an hour for the results, maybe something like that. But yeah. Yeah, okay. you can you can pay it a little bit more to get them even faster. But right. yeah, I use check check. It's a pretty decent app. You my got I, my item that just sold, uh, J, J Rides Flips must have bought it because it's a Mormon coloring book that sold. For yeah. <laughs> Latter day he probably did. Coloring, coloring book. He hey, probably, probably was him. Was that a spoof video he put out, or did he really get downgraded to below average? That's, that's legit. He was just on Cat the Nurse Flipper and Rod's show talking about it. 
um, Ooh, right yeah, before we started terror. recording. Yeah, that Would, wouldn't be hard to have happen. He's man. had, I mean, he's had well, two more today. Two more today. today. What, what was he getting popped? Right and see. Oh, uh, go watch the video, man. It's that sucks. Well, we're talking about it. Well, it's, he he basically his post office is dropping the ball. They're scanning yeah, things as he's dropping them off, and then it turns out that all these items, uh, it looks like we're on the same truck, and it's like that truck disappeared. It, it got lost. So all a, wreck. The, he, he, a ton of people are item not received, and there's no tracking record because nothing got scanned after the initial scan. Yeah, nothing. That's, so it just shows that they're in possession of it, and that's it. Yep. Yeah. And there's That's nothing right. he can do about it, you know. He's been talking with eBay and doing all the things and and everything, but he's dropped below standard for the next. It looks like he was mentioning on Cat Show for the next like sixty days. It looks like. Yeah, that's terrible, man. I feel yeah. for him. Did you accept an offer, Alex? No. I, Whose I phone still... was that? That was mine. You made a sale. He got. He got paid. I got paid. All right, Jason, what do you got, buddy? Sale of the week? Uh, I've been selling convention 55 gassers pretty regular. I've sold three of them this week. They're averaging about 120, 130 a piece. So nice. You picked those up at the convention? Yeah, that that's just that. Yeah, that's the only way you can get those. So, how much do you get them for at the convention? Uh, I, you actually end up around 35 bucks a piece, is about what you got in them. Uh, when I go to the convention, these, the finale car, of course, I collect this casting, so this one's mine. I've actually done ripped this one open. And uh, I love that but, casting. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's my that's one of my favorites that I collect now. Uh, Brendan done a great job on it because he did his original. He did the 55 gasser. That was his real car whenever. Uh, but anyway, um, you got to go to the convention, and then these cars right here pretty much pay my way to the conventions. Hell that's yeah. how you got. That's how you got to do it. You got to, you know. My wife goes with me. Sometimes my son, but most times it's my wife. So you're allowed to get three of each car. Yeah, limit. And then, limit. and then, uh, that's it. Open. Anyway, uh, you're allowed to get three <laughs> of each car, and they sell about usually a hundred to 150 each. And then the finale cars usually are a little better. This time it was a 2018 Copo Camaro, and it, it ain't selling very well. But I get four of those. And I got six of each of the other cars, and I get two pink party cars. And I've sold all that except for just a couple of cars left. And that wow. paid for my trip. And then that basically pays for my hotel room. And that's what you yeah. got to, you know, that's how you got to do it. And then whenever you go there and you buy a collection or you'll go in and buy somebody's room out and keep what you want and then resell it real quick so you can, you know, break even. Good so basically room, you dude. come home Brunch. and you don't, and you've made money, plus you bring home stuff for your collection. That's that's the way you got to do it. He's a guru. He's a guru. You buy out man. the whole room, huh? Well, whenever, you, like when I use, yeah, you buy out the whole room is easier and cheaper. The bulk buys, you know, just yeah. like anything else, you walk in and somebody's got something that you want three or four of and they're three bucks a piece. Say, I'll take all of them for two bucks a piece. Go back to your room, keep the ones you want, and then sell them back out for three to four dollars a piece. Usually loose, easier for me to sell loose because a lot of people don't care. I mean, if you're at a Hot Wheels show, a lot of people don't care unless yeah, you're there uh, if they're in the open or not. So, that's right. right. Yeah. All right. I'm, well, I'm listening. Like I'm things. listening. I'm, I'm, I'm interested. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Anything you want to collect, you got to figure out a way to make enough money to keep it, your collection for free or you can't collect. True that. That's a good point. Matter of fact, that ought to be the tip of the week. There you go. All right. Good tip. Did My, you have a sale? Yep, I do. I went to a yard sale and the footage hasn't come out yet. I've been slacking on the video. I went to a yard sale and found a dude in my industry, and he had uh what's called an RF monitor, radio frequency monitor. And it's basically the human body's only allowed to withstand so much um RF and these monitors we use on top of towers or on rooftops or anywhere where there's active antennas and it just allow you know allows you to work knowing you know what limits you're at and all um 
I sold a used field sense RF monitor with the case and the paperwork and everything for what's that say? 230. Hold on a minute. $235.90. Yeah. There you go. Cool. Well, on 20% off. And I paid five, pick it up for? Oh, five bucks. Paid wow. five bucks. Yep. Heck yeah. That was, That's awesome. That, that, that was. I picked it up. I guess it's been three weeks ago now. I think is when I went to the yard sales. That's killer. Dude. It, you can take the and rest it of just yourself. it just sold. Wow. That's yeah, that was like my golf. best. That was the best day I've had in a while because that sale put me. I was all, almost three hundred and fifty dollars for the day with the other items that sold, and that's good for me. Like very good for me. So that was a good. Uh, that was a good day. Is everybody went? Yep. yep. This is actually a short we're going to share. Okay. And uh, we're going to watch it and get commentary about it. As soon as I, oh, here it is. Ah. Makes you pencil the hat that sold for $18 comes with free head lice. Next up, to get rid of that lice, you can shave off your hair with these set of razors that sold for $14.99. Then we have this Logan Paul action figure that sold for $140 plus shipping. Now it's time to drink your sorrows away with this whiskey book lot. Now you can go take some drunken blurry pictures with this Canon book for dummies. Two more books that sold. We have this grading coin book that sold. And last up, we have Stalin Shadow that sold on eBay. $9.99 plus shipping. All right, guys. Keep on picking. Keep on flipping. Beard King, out. Was, was that weird for you, <laughs> Alex? Um, com that guy's an idiot. I don't know. That's all I got to say about that. Here's this hat with free head lice. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, those you said. I don't know if Travis Matthew stuff sells anymore. That thing sold quick though. That hat. It they it does. That well, that wasn't a Travis the, Matthew. That uh, well, I don't know why I was thinking Travis Matthew hat, but I did. Travis sell Matthew one of those sells too. as it doesn't sell as good as it was say a year ago, but it does yeah. still sell. For some reason, I was I thought it was that hat, but it was the what makes you country hat. So that uh, that figure you got was Mattel Creations. Did you order that online? Yes, I. So I don't know if I missed it. Um, there's another one dropping. I don't know if it's yeah. coming out this this week, right? It's um, next. It's, it's Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah. So I'm. So I bought twelve of the Logan Paul action figures from Mattel Creations. I paid yeah. forty dollars each. I sold them all the up. the The most I sold one for was three hundred dollars. I right. still have one because I kept one for myself in my collection. But this week he's they're dropping the um another figure that's limited edition. They're only twenty bucks though. So I'm contemplating because you never know when it comes to buying the stuff if it's going to go for um, price or or not. Yeah, buy them. Buy what, them. what is it? That came what from Mattel Creations? So what Mattel are they Creations they dropping? do limited uh, a new wrestling figure. I'm blanking. Why well, I don't know why I'm blanking on his name right now. Yeah, Mattel Creations sells. Well, they do Hot Wheels, obviously. Yes, is the main reason I'm on there. But I buy everything that they drop because it's already it's so limited that. You know, with me having a yeah, you getting this get one? Get in first, get them, and then turn around, and I can resell them. Uh, you know, if I want to keep one, I can keep one. If I resell a couple of them, usually they'll well, double, triple in price right off the bat, and then maybe even more. Like you said, a couple hundred bucks on some of them if you can get a hold yeah. of them. Yeah, so I, I I bought I bought them like six months out, you know, and invested yeah. what was like five five something into them. Right. So let me see if I miss this drop. What is the date? Well, how do, how do I, oh, I missed it? I, I missed it. I flaked on it, but it was a CM Punk drop for $25. It, it was this one. It already sold out. I was just going to buy two of them and keep one. And then hopefully the other one would pay for mine, you know, but I, I forgot to buy it. So, but yeah, anything on Mattel creations, if you just sign up, they'll email you when they're dropping new things. So you got to pay limited. for a membership for that. <clears throat> no. I do. Well, I do because of Redline Club membership. Redline Club. You get to come in. You get to come in early. 
huh. and an order, and I also get to order that stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I try to well. order some of the big stuff, but uh, yeah. it's usually, like you said, it'll sell out. And well, Redline stuff, Hot Wheels will sell out in less than a minute. Usually, it's all yeah. gone. That's that. So, Mattel Creation, Logan Paul. Yeah, it's killer. They, they do some awesome stuff right now. They've got a lot of He-Man stuff about to come out. And I don't collect the new stuff, but it's awesome. Yeah. How, I, how much is the Redline Club to join? Uh, usually thirty-five. Is that a month or? No, for, for the year. whole year. For the year. For year. Yeah. But they only open it for so long, and then they close it, and then that's it. Got it. For that year. Well, so let's. See. You got to. When, when do they year. open it? The beginning of the year. Uh, it's usually January, end of January, first of February, and then it runs until they you know, fill up. You might be able to go right now, but I'd say it's filled right now. I haven't right, looked. Right. I'm going to look up, just so everyone knows, I'll look up this action figure that just came out and see what it's going for already on eBay. All right. Yeah, While you're I'm, doing that, I want to share I'm the comment of the down. week to last week's video, guys. This is from Rick Rotman. He says, I listen to the Trash to Cash podcast every week, but I normally know less about reselling after each episode. <laughs> so thank you, Rick. We appreciate you watching, buddy. That's funny. That is funny. That is all right. That's a good comment. He must I didn't see that one. <clears throat> <laughs> must have just left recently. Yeah. And then of course Bethany Bethany left a comment. Alex, let me know when you list that top router so I can send you an offer for half the price. <laughs> I know how happy that makes you. Uh, let me, I'm gonna go with Soul Comps and see if I missed out on something. Did so, you guys see the oh sorry? Go ahead, Alex. This was 25 brand new. This it's selling for average like sixty dollars. So I mean it wouldn't have been a home run like the Logan Paul, which I knew Logan Paul was going to be a home run. You know, I, I put a lot of money into that. I wish I would have bought 20 of them, honestly, just because he's like the hottest new thing in, in, in wrestling, you know? So but how do yeah. you know when something's going to drop like that? How do you know when something's coming up? Do they just send out email? Emails? I get an email alert. Well, yeah, emails, forums. I mean, I don't check. know what you, you know. I mean, you if you follow, like, I only knew about the wrestling because I follow wrestling pages. So I just found out through some Instagram or something. Or actually, WWE themselves promoted it that it was coming out. So, but if you just go on Mattel Creations, they're dropping new stuff all the time of different, not just wrestling toys or cars, right. like all sorts of things. You know? Yeah, I'm on the website now and I see like, Lots of collabs. Monster High, Barbie, yeah, Monster, all kinds Monster, of different Monster things. High would probably be a good investment. I'm not, yeah, I'm anything not sure Monster what the, High, if you can get it, it's crazy yeah, right so now. You just need to follow the time and get on there and order as many that you're willing to, you know? Yeah. Just, Whatever like, money you can spare, if it's a pre order item and you can get in. Yeah, but you're going to, like, with the Logan Paul, I ordered it before I even moved out here. Right. And I had no idea where I was going to ship it to. So I got it shipped to. <laughs> my brother-in-law's house in texas because right. i knew i was coming somewhere to the south so it was six months later and, it, and then he shipped them to me once he got them yeah and, that's know, the thing know. about a lot of that that you gotta wait but i mean if you can cash up front and wait you'll make good yeah. at the end yeah so i mean i put in five something and i came out like two grand on that deal probably yeah you know that i made so all right Gentlemen, if you realize this or not, we are coming almost inside of 90 days away from the Highway 127 sale and the two old guys reselling podcast slash reselling locker room picking on the plateau reseller event. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you've not purchased your tickets, you can go over to eventbrite.com. Get in on that. Thursday night, we have a reseller locker room sponsored bowling tournament where we're going to just be there and having fun. You don't have to be great at bowling. We've talked about that. You do need to wear a nice bowling shirt, which many of us already have those purchased, and we will be sporting those. We may even have the best dressed contest. Who knows? But I anyway, got, that's... I just got tassels for the bowling, so when I throw those... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then... Uh... <laughs> 
Then on Friday nights, the actual meetup from 4 to 6.30 is a pre-meet and greet session followed by a home-cooked meal. Then we're going to be having a live auction and all kinds of free giveaways at the reseller event. Um, lots of things are going to be happening at the meetup you don't want to miss out on. Not to mention all the great picking that happens that entire week. For those of you that are not familiar with 127, the sale is actually advertised on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But if you were willing and able to get into town earlier, uh, last year I started picking on Monday morning and picked through the entire week. Vendors were already there set up and selling. You can get ahead of the crowds, get ahead of the traffic. So you might want to make plans to come to town early. Get your overnight accommodations booked because they do fill up fast. Crossville is not a big area. You may end up having to stay as far away as Knoxville. Some people had to do that last year. So go to Eventbrite, get your tickets, come to the reseller meetup and hang out with us. And uh, it would be great to see you guys come and join us at this event. Absolutely. Yep. <clears throat> If and you need with, a, if you need, if you need a place to stay, you can sleep in the back of Shane's van. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> Come to cool, <laughs> pitch tents. You know, I said we could have people pitch tents at our rental house. We can do that. But hey, we want to say thank you to our locker room members, Skybox members, Wolfman Goodies. That's Mister Chad, Trash to Cash Podcast guys. We want to thank those two for being Skybox members. Go check out their podcast and Wolfman Goodies YouTube channel. Also, we want to thank Mike Camparelli, and I got his name spelled correct this time. Mike Camparelli is a big supporter of the channel, MVP member, and then finally, Keith Vintage for Sports Flips MVP. He also has a YouTube channel selling sports memorabilia. If you have any questions about any of those related categories, go see Keith over on his channel. He sure would appreciate it and tell him that the Locker Room Boys sent you. All right, gentlemen, we are into this thing pretty deep. Do you have any other thoughts you'd want to share before we go? I had a question for Jason. One one Hot Wheel, that, that's the elusive Hot Wheel. What's the one Hot Wheel that you're looking for that you haven't been able to find? Uh, rear board Beach Bomb. Oh, yeah. Everybody's looking for that. I don't even know yeah. what that is. Google. I don't got it. Understand. I actually... <laughs> I actually uh, picked up one that was one of my rare ones not too long ago was the wide interior on the Roger Dodger. Roger Dodger is one of my favorite Hot Wheels when I was little, and I've got the wide interior on it. So that was one that was a – It's even though it's beat up, it's a pretty grail piece for me. So. That's awesome. What what'd you say the name of the one you're looking for is, Jason? It's a rearboard beach bomb. I've got pictures of me holding one or two of them. But I don't own any of them. Last one, I think the last one that Bruce sold, I think he got one hundred fifty thousand. So, well, I think I'm going to Larry Woods' house this week. Awesome! My neighbor's taking me over there. Awesome! Cool. You guys good? We ready to close this thing down? One hundred. No. Uh, yeah. No. What for a Is that chain for a car? Yeah, <laughs> hundred and fifty thousand. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you for joining us for episode number three oh of the Reseller Locker Room Podcast. Big shout out to Jason from Lux Garage. Go give his channel a subscribe and like his videos here on YouTube, as well as Chris Easy Pickens on YouTube, putting out some quality stuff, Chris. Shane, Soda City Flips. Have you Say seen you my love van? Him. Have you seen his van, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen? Go give him a like and subscribe. Beard King Picker selling hats with lice. Go give his YouTube channel a <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs> Sorry, dude. I can't get off of that. My name is Ben, the Rocky Top Picker. Check me out on YouTube. Can't wait to see you guys right here once again in the Reseller Locker Room Podcast every Thursday. 9 a.m. Peace and love. We're out of here. Later, guys.